There is one player out there that I think every dynasty manager should go out there and acquire right now, right after watching this video, you should go out and acquire him now before the season officially starts and we see anything from this player, you should go out and make a trade offer to see if you can get him now on the cheap before his value completely skyrockets and rises. So let's get right into the video. So like I said, I think that there is one dynasty player out there that I think everybody should go out and acquire and try to make a trade for right now before the season actually starts. And that is rookie wide receiver for the New York Jets, Elijah Moore. And honestly, if you want my bet on who is this year's Justin Jefferson from the 2021 wide receiver class, to me, that would be Elijah Moore. As a prospect, Moore had almost everything that you could ask for from a rookie wide receiver coming out of college. He graded out as the wide receiver four in my marker system, and it's just absolutely going to be fantastic, in my opinion, for fantasy football as early as week one. First things first, he's going to play his entire rookie season at 21 years old, which is already fantastic for his longevity and future superstar upside in the NFL. He had great adjusted production in his freshman year at Ole Miss, playing behind A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf. He had his huge sophomore jump in 2019 and then just absolutely lit the NCAA on fire in 2020 with a 38% career dominator rating, a 19-year-old 30% breakout age, and a season high of 4.46 yards per team pass attempt, which was best in the 2021 class. And yes, even better than what Devonta Smith posted at Alabama last year as well. He also ran a 4.35 40-yard dash, which is a 100 speed score at his weight. He ran the fastest shuttle and three cone in this class among wide receivers and was fifth in bench press reps among the wide receivers in this class too. And to top all that off, he had fantastic draft capital being taken as the second pick in the second round by the New York Jets, which is absolutely fantastic. And this whole entire resume of Elijah Moore coming out of college just screams NFL success and NFL elite fantasy producer for us at the wide receiver position. And what's even better for Elijah Moore now is while yes, the New York Jets did spend a lot of their time in the offseason bringing in new wide receivers, you think about Corey Davis, Keelan Cole, they had Denzel Mims, who was their second round pick last year. Then they draft Elijah Moore in the second round this year. There was a lot of new faces in this New York Jets wide receiver room. But what's still great about that is that Elijah Moore, while possibly being the most talented out of all of them at this moment, as of right now, also had a very clear path to the wide receiver two position on this team behind Corey Davis initially, especially in week one, because Jamison Crowder is already out. Keelan Cole is a game time decision. And I think Elijah Moore has already passed Denzel Mims on the depth chart because he's basically been buried behind all of those other wide receivers throughout all of the summer and the training camp. So entering week one, this is Corey Davis and Elijah Moore. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised either if as the season goes along, we see more and more that Elijah Moore is creeping into becoming the actual team wide receiver one for the New York Jets, or at least making it some sort of a 1A, 1B situation with Corey Davis, like what we saw last year with Justin Jefferson doing the same exact thing with Adam Thielen. And I get that there are a lot of unknowns with this New York Jets team. I mean, first of all, it's New York Jets, but they have a new coach, new coaching staff, new offense, rookie quarterback, Zach Wilson coming in. What does he do? What is his potential and his ultimate floor as well? But most of the times in fantasy, those unknown and ambiguous situations are sometimes the ones that you really want to chase and lean into because they can offer the most potential upside and value, especially related to cost for a lot of fantasy players like Elijah Moore. So speaking of cost, Elijah Moore was the wide receiver 29 in August ADP because you don't have September yet. But as of August, Elijah Moore was being valued in a very long and large tier of wide receivers at the wide receiver 29 spot in the sixth or seventh round among guys like both Rams wide receivers and Cooper Cup and Robert Woods, Julio Jones, Cortland Sutton, Tyler Lockett, like there's a very realistic chance that at this time next year, Elijah Moore gains significant ADP value next summer just because of age and because of the age difference between him and a lot of those other wide receivers that I just named, as well as some of the ones ahead of him and tiers above him as well, that he could just jump those guys just strictly because he's going to be 22 years old next year. Not to mention the fact that if he does produce very well for fantasy in his rookie year, and is this year's Justin Jefferson, or even heck, this year's CeeDee Lamb or T. Higgins, 
it's a very real possibility that I think we could see Elijah Moore jump all the way into the top 15 wide receivers overall in Dynasty at this point next year, which would be a major fantasy bump and value bump for Elijah Moore, especially at his current trade value and where you can acquire him right now in trades. So looking at recent trades from the DLF Trade Finder since the beginning of September, we can see trades like Elijah Moore for Derek Carr, Mike Davis in a 22 second and one quarterback leagues, Elijah Moore for Jarvis Landry, Russell Gage, and a one quarterback 22 second, Elijah Moore for Jacoby Myers in a 2023 first, Elijah Moore for just 2023 first, and while there are definitely trades in here that value Elijah Moore and show Elijah Moore being valued higher than market value is right now, overall, the majority of all these trades, even from recent history and recent hype and stuff from training camp in August, that still show that Elijah Moore is still being valued as that dynasty asset that most dynasty managers were able to get in the second round of their rookie drafts as well, even in one quarterback leagues, where he was still being valued as a fringe first or early second round rookie pick just a couple months ago. So if that's the price for a lot of dynasty managers for Elijah Moore, I would actively be looking to try to acquire Elijah Moore right now before the season actually starts and before we see Elijah Moore play on Sunday, go out and send a trade offer for Elijah Moore starting at uh, just a little bit more than what you think that a early second or late first round value would be in your rookie drafts, maybe pairing you know another wide receiver with a second round pick or some sort of value like that, even all the way up to I would still be very comfortable with a future first round pick for Elijah Moore because if he does hit and he does smash, think about all the value that you can get out of him next year and the value increase that he's going to have next summer. It's going to be impossible to get Elijah Moore at anywhere close to the current value that he holds right now. And that's why I think it is imperative that you go out and try to buy Elijah Moore right now before we even see him play on Sunday. If you would also like to see a video on the trade value and current market for some of these injured running backs who are missing the entire 2021 NFL season, you can click right up here and find that. And with that all being said, guys, thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch y'all later.